Let's look in Numbers 22, and I'm, I'm going to skip a little bit to give you a little introduction and then uh, talk about that, but uh, we're talking about Balaam and his donkey, and the key characters here are Balaam, the donkey, the angel of the Lord, and a man by the name of Balak, and Balak, uh, we see him in the first few verses of chapter 22, he was afraid of Israel. So he did kind of a smart thing. He must have had some belief in God, but lacked understanding. And he was, uh, verse 4 tells us, he was king of the Moabites. And so he goes to a prophet who was a crooked prophet, but yet controlled by God by the name of Balaam. And he said, I'll give you wealth, I'll give you power, whatever you want, but Put a curse on these people. Put a curse on Israel. And he said, plainly in verse 17, curse this people. And of course, Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak, if Balaam or Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord. Let's look in verse 21. I'll read. And Balaam rose up early in the morning. He's in a hurry. He's excited. And he saddled his ass and went with the princes of Moab. And God's anger was kindled. Did you, did you hear that? God gets angry. I had to put something on Facebook the other day. People talk about just, just the love of God. There's another side of, of God. And it's called his anger. He, he's angry at sin. There's even sins that he says, I hate. I wouldn't have picked the sins that God picked, would you? Uh, he that soweth discord among the brethren and uh, a few sins there, God said, I hate those sins. And God, God gets angry. That's why there's a place called hell. Amen. And I made the statement on Facebook that was read by multitudes of millions. <laughs> and it said, <laughs> I said, you're telling people only about the love of God and how they interpret that today, I believe, after talking to as many people as I talk to, is God's going to overlook my sin. And God will not overlook our sin. We, it, sin has to be judged. Thank God it was judged on Calvary in the person of Jesus Christ, the, the Son of God and God the Son. He's God in the flesh, the Bible says. And so God gets angry, and here he is. His anger was kindled because he went, and, uh, and the angel of the Lord, now he's in a hurry, he's trying to find a way to get this money from Balak. He's trying to find a way uh, to find a, uh, a circumvent the rule of God or the command of God, and he's, he's saying, man, I gotta get this money. We got a lot of people today, a lot of preachers today, it's all about the money. You say, how do you know? Take the money away and watch them. Take their jet away. You know, uh, take their wealth away and, and see how long they serve God. They'll change businesses. Uh, and so God's anger was kindled in verse 22 because he went, the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against them. The angel of the Lord has got a sword. He can't be seen, but he's there. He's waiting in the future for a believer that will not obey him. I, I, I know this is probably kind of strange to some of y'all, it's called the truth. <laughs> and you may not have heard this in other, uh, other churches, but I've heard it all my life and I, I believe it to be true. God will either take you to heaven as a Christian and crown you, or he'll crown you and take you to heaven. And you say, will God do that? He will with his children. There's a point of no return. The Bible teaches that. There's a point where we go so far and we go so far and God said, that's enough. So he's got a lot of ways of doing that. And so uh, he goes with his two servants and the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way. The donkey did. That's not a normal occurrence. Don't start a cult. <laughs> Don't start, if you do, I'm bringing all my dogs to church, to that church. Don't start a cult that, 
that says, you know, we uh, animals are talking for God. They're not. This is a unique thing God did to make a point. And it actually happened. God can do pretty much anything he wants. <clears throat> and so the ass or the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way. God allowed him to see him and his sword drawn in his hand. And, uh, and the ass turned aside out of the way and went into the field. And Balaam smote the ass to turn her into the way. He's kicking her. He's hitting her. Why won't you go? Take me where I want to go. But the angel of the Lord stood in a path of the vineyards, a wall being on this side and a wall on that side. There's no way around without facing God's anger. That's what that angel represents. And so when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself into the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall and he smote her. And the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place. There was no way to turn either to the right or to the left. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam. And Balaam's anger was kindled and he smote the ass with a staff. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass and said unto Balaam, And Balaam is so angry this donkey's never talked to him before. It wanted to, I'm sure, but it never talked to him before. It had never said anything, and he's so caught up in the anger, what have I done unto thee? Now, I'm going to tell you what. If, if a donkey started talking to me, I, first thing I'm doing is getting off of that thing. I'm going to find out what's going on. I, I, done unto thee, why, what have I done unto thee that thou hast smitten me these three times and Balaam said unto the ass, Because thou hast mocked me, I would there were a sword in my hand, for now would I kill thee. The donkey could have said, I know where one's at. Just keep walking, you'll find it. The ass said unto Balaam, Am I not thine ass, upon whom thou hast ridden ever since I was into this day? Was I ever wont to do so unto thee? Have I ever acted like this before? Well, you could say that of the preacher when he gets mad. I'm glad some of y'all weren't here Sunday night. Was that Sunday night? Uh, Wednesday, no, Sunday night, I think, whenever. Wednesday night, I preached on the Lord will set your fields on fire. He'll get your attention. And so, uh, the, uh, and the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam and he saw the angel of the Lord, that's a terrifying sight. In all his glory and all his power and, and, and he's glowing and glistening and he's got a sword and his countenance is, he's ticked off. He's an angry angel. And he, he bowed his head and fell flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten Thine ass these three times, behold, I, I, I went out to withstand thee because thy way is perverse before me. And the ass saw me and turned from me these three times. Unless she had turned from me, surely now I would have slain thee and saved her alive. Balaam said unto the angel, Lord, I have sinned, for I knew not that thou stood in the way uh, against me. And now, therefore, I, it depleases thee, I will get back again. And the angel of the Lord said, no. He said, go with the men. The, the, uh, Balak's men, go with them and then give them the, the uh, prayer that I bid thee. Tell them you cannot curse Israel. And so he did that. And there's so much we could compare this to. Well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the word of God. Thank you for these people that are here. May the Holy Spirit Feel this place, empower us, speak to us, stay the flesh that would, uh, would uh, distract us and Satan and the world. I pray, God, that you would, would have liberty here today in Jesus' name. Amen. First thing I want you to see in this uh, strange scripture is that God's in absolute control. You cannot, you could. 
You can influence a church. You can change a church. You can get rid of a preacher. You can get somebody in there with, with itching ears, the Bible says, to tell you what you want to hear. There's plenty of them. But God said, you're not going to curse them. There's a limit. God has a limit until we'll, which he will let believers go. And when you cross that line, there's, there's a message that I fear always since I've been saved. By the way, the fear of the Lord is beginning of wisdom. Anybody fear anything? I got some relatives who I used to have back home I, I wouldn't go hunting with. I feared them. I'm, you know, uh, uh, a truck was coming the other day, and I was thinking, what would happen if I pulled out in front of that truck? It was going to hit on the driver's side. We're not talking about the passenger side. I might survive that somehow. It would wipe me up. There's some things we ought to fear. We need to reverence God. And I think one of the things that's wrong us, we're living in the Laodicea church age, read that. Unless, now we're in, we're in the Laodicea church age. I mean, the Bible teaches that. And that's a time when, boy, they are beyond lukewarm. They are saying we are increased with goods. We don't need anything. This is the day that we're living in. This is in the town that we're living in. It just hit me like a ton of bricks. I preached about that. Maybe it was last Sunday sometime about how it's here. And we are so conditioned and we are so invaded by the Laodicea church age unless we are drastically different than other churches that don't pe preach the wrath of God, that don't preach heaven and hell, that don't have any standards. If we're not drastically different from them, we got a little bit of Laodicea going on. I'm, I'm working on a message that's brilliant. It, it's called Made in Laodicea. And you know, the, and I preached on that the other day. They were famous they made a black wool into clothing, and it was just everybody wanted it. And they also made a pill, believe it or not, that was crushed and mixed with water, and it was an eye salve. And they said it would cure most eye problems. I'm thinking it must have had some little bit of antibiotic in it, and, and they put it on their eyes. And you think God doesn't have humor? You think God doesn't have sarcasm? God said, you know what you guys, they were famous for it. The Romans bought it. And God said, you know what you guys need to buy from me? I shall. Put it on your eyes so you can see. And people, we, are, we have a degree, even among Christians, of spiritual blindness. There's things you don't see. There's things in the way that things that are coming that we, we can't see it. God is in absolute control either way. Hey, sometimes God sends a donkey in our life. I, I, I've listened to donkeys speaking to me. It's the word of God. It's full of warnings. And we get in the flesh. We get in the flesh sometimes and we don't even see it as wrong. Amen. I've been training some amen people. We don't even see it as wrong. God said, Christians, you can't see right from wrong. I wish I had a dollar for every time somebody said, I don't see anything wrong with it. Well, you wouldn't. If you're not right with God, are you thoroughly right with God? Word of God's full of warnings. Everything in the Bible, in the New Testament in particular, God says, don't do this. Don't hurt your brother. You know, don't, don't 
hurt people. I love, you know what I found out about the Ten Commandments? I've seen the damage that breaking the Ten Commandments does in families. All of them. People get consumed with covetousness. People commit adultery. And then they destroy people. Just for, to have a good time, they destroy somebody's marriage. And I've talked to people about it. I've seen the pain. I've seen people weep because their life is turned up side down and murder. We commit murder in our heart. We, we commit, we have hatred in our heart toward people. And we find a way to work that out. I don't want to talk about anybody, but be it far from me to say anything bad about so-and-so, but you know what that rascal did. The Word of God is full of warnings. The preacher, what a donkey he is. I could have used the other word, but I didn't. Would have been funnier. What a donkey he is. He's just not with the times. God calls men of God. And now we're living in a day. I don't believe in organized religion. Well, well maybe there's something wrong with the church. Uh, we are in the church of Laodicea age. We are in the last days. Men shall be lovers of their own self. We're here. Wickedness abounds. Uh, and the love of many is waxing cold because of the wickedness. People are surprised when something really bad happens in a church. I'm not surprised. I'm surprised more of it doesn't happen. <laughs> Preacher, do you know that God calls men to preach? God called me to pastor. I had no idea in 1978. Two years after I was saved, I came to the altar right about over here in our home church. There were six or seven of us. Jack Green was a preacher. He's a brother to Oliver B. Green. I've got some books by Oliver B. Green. I can't even remember what he preached now. If I thought about it, I could. But I surrendered to preach. I had no idea. I found out in my second year of Bible college I wanted to pastor. I didn't want to be like a church planner. And I said, God, I'll go anywhere you want me to go, but I'm staying when I get there. People say, when are you going uh, to retire? I'm in pretty good shape. I got to do some funerals first. <laughs> so any of y'all want me to retire, just bring me your favorite verse. And I'll get you a good, good ceremony. The preacher sent by God. Preach the word in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke. Oh, my flesh don't like it. Get right with God. You'll love it. And when you're not here, God gives a message to a preacher to preach to you. And he prays about it. And he thinks about it all the time. Amen. It's his life. If it's his heart. It's his responsibility. Obey them that have the rule over you. You know the word Brother Freddy used to say this. I was always afraid to say it. Brother Freddy said, do you know the word overseer, pastor as an overseer, it means boss man. Anybody ever had a boss man? I listened to my boss, but I listened to my pastor. All he had to do was say, I would rather you not do this. Man, I did what he said. Because I felt like he was God's man. Sometimes the preacher says, hey, you know what? I have never, I've been here 30 years. And, and before I came here, I've never seen anybody. I've seen people move, good people move to different places or take another job or whatever. 
I've never seen a person get out of church that didn't start missing church first. And they lose their discernment. They lose their discernment. And they're, they're getting blind. And, and they look at me and they said, you know, I'm, I'm just not getting fed. I'm just, I'm just not, I don't know. I'm just not feeling it anymore. If other people are feeling it, you ought to be feeling it. Woo! Sometimes it's God's man. He, I'm going to answer to God. You are not going to get in my way and hinder me when God tells me what to preach or what to do and I pray about it and I consult with people about it. You are not going to get in the way of me and God, me doing God's will. Not that you would. I got to follow God. It ain't about who likes it or who doesn't like it. I'm trying to find a way. Somebody said to us, we were at a high hop, I just met him. I was hoping he'd come to church. He's from, what was that, somewhere down south, Alabama, Alabama, Anniston, Alabama. And he said, uh, what kind of preacher are you? Are you a hellfire, damnation preacher? I said, yes, with a little sugar on it. <laughs> I try to put it in a way, you know, I, I, I try, I, and I agonize. I agonize about what I preach and what I say. And then I ask my wife, how, how was that? And then I see it on YouTube, and I realize I'm pretty good. <laughs> Preacher's trying to keep you from getting your head cut off. He knows what's coming down the road because he's lived it. He knows what it feels like to have your fields set on fire. He knows how Satan gets us in increments. One step away, another step away. And before long, it makes perfect sense. Because we're blind. Donkey's trying to save you. The donkey knows what's going on. I'm trying to help people's marriages. I'm trying to help people not to make stupid decisions. I talked with somebody yesterday. I was hoping he'd be here today, but <clears throat> just pray for him. And pretty much he met me at the church and we couldn't, we couldn't talk here. So he got in the car, went to the coffee shop and I told him from here to the coffee shop exactly what his problem was. And he said, you're right. <laughs> I said, I'm just going to condense it. Tell it like it is. You do what you want with it. We, and the number one thing with people is we, we're buying into the illusion that we're going to live forever that I can find happiness maybe with another person in my life or bring me happiness and not necessarily. That's only happened one time that I know of and that's when I came into my wife's life. <laughs> Say amen, sister. I made you happy, didn't I? <laughs> Donkey's trying to save you. Trying to give you a warning of something you can't see. You, you got your mind focused on, <clears throat> if I could find a way to angle around this to make this fun for me. Church should not always be fun for you unless you're a glutton for punishment. If you can't take rebuke, you're not going to go far in the Christian life. You think I've never been rebuked? My pastor rebuked me and everybody in our church constantly. And I just raised my hand saying, hallelujah. I'm going to tell you something. I told a preacher this. He said, I don't feel that way. I said, look at it the way I'm looking. I can't wait to the judgment seat of Christ. Cannot wait. It's not because I'm everything. I'm going to try to get... Some of the stuff taken off my record at the judgment seat of Christ. What do they call that when they, they mark that off? 
in a court system? Expunged. I'm going to try to get Jesus to it expunge the horrible mistakes I've made in my life and my sins so you don't hear it. But if he reads it out, thank God, I want truth. I get so sick of untruth in this world. You can find any angle you want. I, I watch the Ukraine war. And if you watch India, any report from India says essentially Russia's winning. And then there's people that are pro-Ukrainian. That's what I want to watch. Pro I want to hear that we're winning. I told my wife, I said, I'll listen to fake news if it's what I want to hear. <laughs> Makes me feel good to think they're winning that big. Judgment seat of Christ is not about your sins. We shall all appear at the judgment seat of Christ. The faithful, the unfaithful, the slackers. What well, I got a message. I'm, what was that? I'm preaching on the small children, babes in Christ, the slackers, the skinwalkers, and the shapeshifters. Is that a great message or what? Huh? He sees what you can't see. It's a warning. Be careful the little steps that you take. You might, there's something might happen you never dreamed. You might end up two years from now facing a divorce that could have been avoided. You might be two, five, six, seven years from now dealing with unruly kids. I don't think they, oh, for goodness sake. Who in their right mind takes a kid somewhere to fast food and asks them where they want to eat? You don't ask them where they want to eat. You find out what they don't like and take them there. You don't take one to, one to uh, McDonald's and one to IHOP and one to, Grandkids, do you do that for the kids? Yeah. No wonder they turned out like they did. <laughs> he sees what you can't see. It's the age we're living in, Laodicea. It touches us. Key theme is blindness. Can't see the angel in the way. Problems are coming. If you don't learn how to Put your burden on Jesus. I'm telling you what, drugs are there. I can't imagine what it's like for a parent for their kids to be addicted to drugs. We do celebrate recovery. We've had people on drugs within a mile from this church. A few of them that have killed themselves. You can handle alcohol. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a preacher that believes in no alcohol unless it's in NyQuil. <laughs> you got to be careful with that. You don't need to be a wine sipper, a beer drinker. Are you shaking your head because you should be or, or are you agreeing with me? I'm agreeing with okay. you. Okay. <laughs> Some people, I guess they can handle it. My dad couldn't. People come to see our camp. I can't imagine people that go to this church that deal with alcoholism and, and you were in there buying a six pack. If it offends your brother, cut it out. There you, how about that? You got any kids? You know, you know for sure kids or brothers or sisters won't become alcoholics? Or you know that for sure? He sees what you can't see. There's danger awaits in your life. And it may be a two or three, five years from now. And you're taking steps toward that angel and you don't even know it. And the church is saying, don't go that way. And the preacher's pleading, don't do that. 
And the Bible clearly tells us what to do, what not to do. I want to say this about salvation. I talked to a guy a while back. He said, he told me all his wisdom. And he said, let me ask you something. You think I'm saved? I said, no. I didn't used to have the boldness to do that. But I just said, no, you're not. There's nothing about you that's saved. I said, I want you to get saved. The next time I saw him, he had a fifth of vodka, offered me some. I didn't take but one, just a small drink, just to be sociable. No, I'm kidding. I didn't do that. If we don't do right, if we don't stay humble, if we don't fight this flesh, we're saying to the world, by the way, I got a message. I'm going to wait a little bit because I'll go volatile on you. The importance of church. How you treat local church is how you treat God. Yeah. How you treat the local church is how you feel about God. Get it right. Just get it right. How many wish I'd hurry up and stop? Raise your hand. Jerry, I see that hand. We need to get our fear of God back. I preached this the other day. We need to get our faith in God's correction. How many believe God will take care of you? Amen. How many believe God will correct you? Amen. He will correct you. He will correct me, which I don't think is fair. <laughs> but he will. How many have ever been chasing? Oh boy. If you're saved, any you length of time, God's going to train you. He's going to deal with you. And that's a loving God. But He's also a holy God. Holy God, the good thing about that is God won't, he won't change His word. We need faith in God's correction, we need to focus on what matters. We're living in the Laodicea church age. We're living in the age of blindness. And it's affecting our fundamental Bible-believing independent Baptist churches. It's easy to lose focus. Can you handle rebuke? I don't like rebuke. My daughter told a policeman, she's a little hothead. She learned that from her husband. Cop stopped her one time and he's just chewing on her. She said, are you gonna give me a ticket? He said, yes. He said, she said, well, just give me the ticket. I don't want the lecture. <laughs> just keep the lecture. Be submissive to God. You don't wanna, you don't want to fight God? If the Lord's dealing with you about salvation, you need to say yes. Will there be a time down the road, maybe years and years, maybe you live a long life and you look back on that time when that crazy donkey preacher told you if you don't come to Christ, and have the blood of his forgiveness applied to your heart and life, you're going to die and go to hell. You might, you might get through this life fine, but sooner or later you're going to face it. I don't like Russian roulette. Anybody ever played it? The ones that played it aren't here anymore. <laughs> and you put a bullet in and spin it around, and let's don't talk about that. That's what, knowing you need to get saved and not doing it, that's kind of what you're playing. It's appointed unto man once to die. After that, the judgment. I've been saved 40 years, and there's nothing that I have given up to become a Christian that I regret. I got better friends than I've ever had. I got a better life than I've ever had. I'm not uncertain. I'm, I'm peaceful. Even in the worst times, I'm peaceful. And I've got God with me. 
I want to encourage you as Thomas comes to play a song and as Joel comes to give an invitation, I want you to think about this thing if you're not saved. If you are saved, get right with God. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness.